So I've been saying for a while, the next step in D&D Beyond's evolution is going to be a virtual tabletop environment. Well, let me present to you Above VTT. It is a plugin that you can add to your browser that turns D&D Beyond into a virtual tabletop. It's got all of your most essential features for a virtual tabletop right in your D&D Beyond campaign. Let me show you. This is awesome. Hey guys, Shane from Behold here, and I'm excited for today's video. And if you're as excited as me for a virtual tabletop to be native in D&D Beyond, be sure to like this video. This is so cool. This is awesome. This is just in D&D Beyond. All I did was go to Above VTT, uh, their plugin page, download it, and I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna jump over to scenes here, and I'm going to add scene and edit this new scene. So check this out. You can import templates from D&D Beyond, which we'll show you in just a second. They also include some free maps. So there's a bunch of free maps that you can choose from right here. Living battle maps. This is so cool. So let's throw that on there and watch what happens. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. And so this map will run for three hours, moving just like you see it here. This is so cool. This is awesome. And there's a bunch just like this. So to get started, they have a couple of things available to you here. Uh, we'll go over the most essential things I think that are necessary for any virtual tabletop. I don't think they miss a beat in this, in this version right now. I know they're planning on doing a lot more. <laughs> Look, there's little birds flying around too. That's awesome. Anyway, okay, so first things first, you need to be able to connect with your players visually and audibly. Uh, they do have a video and voice chat option available in the bottom left of the screen. Uh, it's the button connect video all the way in the bottom left. I won't open it up because it's gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, so you can do that, that is available. You also are able to add in maps and drop fog of war on those maps. Uh, so I'm gonna show you here how the fog, work, uh, fog button works up on the top left corner. You've got a couple of options there. Fog, I'm gonna go ahead and hide all. So let's just drop that in there. And then once you wanna reveal, you have a couple of options, circle, square, uh, areas that you wanna reveal. We have a draw tool, basics, square. You can draw a square, you can draw a circle, and you can draw a cone. Uh, so one thing I really like about this is that it incorporates all of your purchased D&D Beyond content. If you have shared content, it will work with above VTT. As you can see here, we'll add a scene and we'll go to the dndbeyond.com resources that they have for scenes. Uh, this is really cool because a lot of these sources, the maps are already scaled for the grid layout. So I'm gonna right now jump over to the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak and we'll go to Nomengard. All right, so here I am at the Nomengard map. I didn't have to adjust anything here. They already set up all of the grids uh, so that the tokens can automatically snap to the nearest grid square and they've sized it out perfectly. Uh, I've already got a couple of tokens dropped onto this map, but I just wanna show you really quickly how it works. So you have a couple of options on the right hand side. You have your game log, which actually does roll from D&D Beyond. Uh, so any rolls that players make on their character sheets on D&D Beyond will translate over to here. You have a players tab. It'll list all of the players that are in that campaign and allows you to add a token and view their character sheet. Just a quick look. It is basically just the D&D Beyond window for the character sheet. And you can see here, when I make a roll with the D&D Beyond character sheet, it updates the game log. Game log turns red, we get updated, and the roll shows up. For Dungeon Masters, they also have a great monster search feature. So this one here, uh, we're gonna use the gnomes, the rock gnome recluses. And when you add, it'll drop in another token towards the center of your map here. Uh, so you can just keep populating more gnomes as you go. So when you're doing your DM prep, all you have to do is go through beforehand, find which monsters are in there and just populate them in. Just search their names and populate them, drop their tokens. Okay, so I have my monsters put in place. Now I want to start a combat. So I'm gonna close up this side here and I'm gonna go to combat. I'm gonna drop that open. I've already got my player character in this 
uh, combat encounter tracker. All you have to do to add a monster into the combat tracker is right click on their token and add to combat tracker. Super simple, it's so easy. This is perfect, this is everything you need. And we'll say this guy wanders in as well. I'm going to add to combat tracker. And then you can roll initiative. It only rolls for the monsters. Players can roll their own initiative and it populates into the combat tracker there. Characters can also be hidden from players. So if you have some sort of like invisible stalker type creature, or character cast invisibility, you can always hide from players. So the players won't see that token on the map, but it allows you to know where they are. You can adjust the token size and you can also add and track conditions. So that's a really quick overview of combat and tokens. Now let's just take a look at this last search option. You can look up spells. Uh, right now, it doesn't seem to show any kind of way to track uh, treasure, uh, magic items, anything like that that I can search. You probably have to jump off to another window for that. Uh, that's one of the features that I would like to see from them. Let me just go over some of my brief criticisms uh, of, of this virtual tabletop. One thing I like about Owlbear Rodeo is when you use the draw feature for something like a circle, the point of origin is where you start your cursor. So when you start here in Owlbear Rodeo and draw out, the circle will actually expand from that point of origin. Whereas here, you don't have a point of origin really. You have the last corner of the circle that you're drawing. So you just have to kind of get it right generally in the area. I prefer a point of origin and expanded circle out from that, but this one here is kind of a drag and pull. So there's no way to set a layer uh, where I can just start drawing on top of it. So when I hit draw here, I haven't found a way to have it have its own layer. So I'm not affecting the tokens, you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna have a cone area of effect originating from Thalmor, but you see here, I have cone selected. And when I come over to Thalmor and I try to find a point of origin from him to target these gnomes, I can't really get there because it the mouse cursor hovers over these tokens. I kind of have to play around with it a little bit and make it, make it just so. Uh, the other option is you just take one of them off the cone where you want the origin to be and pull out that way. So not a big deal, but just a minor tweak that I think could be done. So in a nutshell, that is above VTT. Again, I'm gonna go over more in depth on how we can use this and tweak it to our own games, uh, especially playing something like with Discord. I wanna experiment a little bit with that and see how I can make it work. Uh, that'll be coming up at a later time though, but I'm just super excited to show this off, this new virtual tabletop for D&D Beyond. I've been, I've been saying it's the next step of D&D Beyond's evolution and here it is. So, someone just went ahead and made it. They did it themselves. They didn't wait for the dev team to do it and it is bare bones what you need and a lot of cool features. Again, the things that I think could be improved on this, adding a layer for drawings so you're not affecting the tokens on the battle map, but having a point of origin for the circle and square shapes that you draw onto the maps uh, also, I'm a really big fan of macros and just doing keyboard shortcuts, things like that. I mean, I use a stream deck for a lot of my online play with Discord. So being able to just do button commands uh, instead of all the clicking, moving around, and maybe even having to jump from screen to screen if you're doing things as a dungeon master, searching for magic items, uh, encounter tables, things like that. Uh, very minor things though. This is such a wonderful, virtual tabletop experience, especially for those of us that are already using D&D Beyond. You need nothing else. Uh, so thank you guys very much for checking out today's video. I know it's not a tutorial, but it's more of just me just fanboying out on this cool new virtual tabletop. Tell me what you think. Is this what you expect from a virtual tabletop experience on D&D Beyond? What features would you like the developer to come up with? Just leave a comment down below. Uh, but thank you guys very much for checking us out. And as always, have fun. Learn lots. So like this one I really love. Uh, you've got this boat effect kind of in the water. Uh, so if there's a, a water-based combat going on around a ship or a boat, you can use these kinds of maps. Really, really cool and I think would really up the game for your online D&D games when you've got these sort of cool moving effects going on for your players to enjoy. Uh, so